Launching in to the theme song of Connecting the Classics. What episode number is this? Episode 30. So we are now, we're no longer the old podcast of the young podcasts. We're the young podcast of the old podcasts. Couldn't have said it better myself. We're over the hill. We've been podcasting a long time. 30 episodes about the hit and the thousands like Joe Rogan. Um, do you know more than I know? Should we tell the listeners what this show's about? Yeah, this show is a radio hour where Lee Robinson is in Oakland. And me, my name's Will, I'm in Los Angeles. Some might say I'm the LA face and Lee is the Oakland booty. And there's no more to be said. We just connect two classic albums using tangential references. Lee knows more than I know. I know more than Lee knows. Um, There's a competitive element to the game where we uh, award each other points and we encourage you listening along at home to award points. Uh, because the points don't matter, but there is a winner of each episode, and it's based on arbitrary information, kind of like me rambling too long for this intro gets me, like, minus five points. Actually, I thought you, you did a great job. But That's spot yeah. on. Yeah, there's nothing more you need, you know? Um, so this week, we did, we chose album covers as our theme, so sort of a loose theme there, but uh, I went with Miles Davis' Bitches Brew, And I went with Young Thugs, Jeffrey, or No, My Name is Jeffrey. Interesting. Uh, So, so yeah, you want to talk about your album? I was interested to see why you picked the cover. Yeah. Let's, uh, I guess, yeah, I started with uh, this pick first, sent it to your your way. Um, I think for me, I don't know, I just thought of, like, you know how certain albums... You, you know, people talk about, like, back in the day when they would buy records based off of the album cover. This is one of those albums for me where, if, like, I was in a shop and I didn't know anything. Like, you're obviously probably going to know con- some conception of who Miles Davis is, but I feel like it's just the colors are really pretty. There's, like, this sort of surrealist, psychedelic element to it. I don't yeah, know. I definitely a lot, pick it up. There's a lot going on. Should um, describe it for the listener. It's, like... A face like some sweating tribal like native people in like tribal like garb like um, on a beach like a loincloth yeah looking at lightning yeah over, it's got uh, this like swirling clouds um, um, there's like fire I don't know it's a it's, it's something you gotta look Google it listener what, so what was the title because I've always heard Miles Davis bitches brew and like thought ooh you know he was edgy but what's yeah. the title mean um i don't know if i know the title i remember that there's that beer called bitches brew huh which so oh. yeah that probably came from this right or no yeah yeah exactly yeah no no it definitely came from this um but, but yeah uh, and then it's also one of those albums where i feel like you know everyone's always mentioning it uh, i took an uber ride once and this guy um was playing the album and one of the people in the, the car I was with was like, what is this? And he's like, man, you don't know Miles Davis bitches brew. <laughs> and so then I went home and listened to the album. Oh, nice. But it's, it's the perfect album, I think, to like play when you're picking up people in an Uber. Oh, totally. And actually, because I've been driving <laughs> around a lot lately and I've been listening to it while driving. It's a great car album to kind of just zone you out because it's like background music but it's not boring like i never listened to it before it's not boring like most jazz not most jazz is boring but i mean i'm just i don't always understand what's going on in jazz and i don't know i feel like maybe back in the day when jazz was like the thing the cool thing the cool hip thing that the yeah hip cats were doing i don't know if i butchered that slang um but yeah, I don't know. So I just don't know much about jazz. Long-winded explanation, minus five points. But I really like the album and definitely just got me in the zone driving around. 
Um, it definitely was like experimental, I think, for its time. That's another reason why I think people always bring it up is it was kind of Miles Davis blowing up what the the jazz genre had been, you know, up to that point. Yeah. Um, he used like electronic instruments, which was new. He used like guitars and electric pianos. And yeah. then, um, you know, the whole jazz fusion genre kind of blew up out of this. Uh, so do you want me to just launch into a song? Or yeah, do you let's talk launch about into Jeffrey? a song. No, let's launch into a song from Bitches Brew, and then we'll talk about Young Thug after. All right. So I figured I've been too uh, easy on our listeners. We did Spice Girls last week. So I thought I would challenge you guys with a 14-minute jazz song. So go ahead and launch into that, and we will talk to you guys at the end of this. Okay, cool. I'm going to go uh, take right. a break. See you guys soon. Yeah. let them dangle long enough it's only been 20 seconds but yeah <laughs> i tried uh good bit lee i'm gonna give you uh 10 points Thanks. for the bit um i well one thing why i wanted to jump back in is i do love the like tempo how it's kind of like off kilter on this yeah, song. so is this like a new orleans style because it's called miles runs the voodoo down yeah, well, it's definitely he it has like huge funk elements to it. I think that's probably why it's referenced in New Orleans, is they were big on the like '60s funk that had horns and guitar and drums, like the Meters. You know the band the Meters. Mm, I don't know. You know more than I. Know. But, anyways, I love the way he would like. I don't know if you read this on wiki he'd bring in like these studio musicians and they didn't really know what they were going to play and he would just give them maybe like a tempo count or a couple of chords mm -hmm. and then they would just launch into it and he, he like it's total mind fuck because it said that like miles davis loved doing this because it made the musicians like pay closer attention to him and like try harder which i thought was fun that's cool yeah because it's like total like improvisation right yeah 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 most of these songs i think are all improv that's cool um, and they had like multiple drummers i think like multiple bass players it was just like really unconventional mix of influences i think and at the time did this blow up like was this a big album at the time or what and miles davis was already popular he's already right? established right so like miles davis goes back to the 50s yeah wait so what year is this this is like 70, I think it's released in 70. Oh, okay, so it's like rock inspired. Yeah, people always say this is like the, it's like a rock jazz album. And yeah, the idea of like adding jazz to other genres is what, where fusion okay. came from. Well, cause it's so like it's Muddy Waters has like Electric Mud. I don't know if you've heard that album, uh -huh. but it's kind of the same concept. Totally. And like people loved it, but then it's like uh, Muddy Waters like hated it because it was just his record label trying to make him like profit off the psychedelic sounds and stuff rather than playing mm -hmm. the blues. Like, Interesting. But seems no, like this I think is more this of like was, an artistic expression yeah, type thing. This is definitely Miles Davis doing it on purpose. Kind of Oh, it just reminds rules. me of uh, um, Billy Madison. If peeing your pants is cool, consider me Miles Davis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. I tried to weave that into my connection somehow. I was like hoping there was a song playing in the background or something, but there wasn't. That's awesome. I'll give you uh, 20 points for that. Oh, thank you. So why'd you pick this one? Oh, you just like the tempo. Yeah, and I, I also read on Wiki that some of the songs, I don't know if you noticed, you can hear Miles Davis like snapping, like mm. literally making snaps to help people like keep the count that's cool <coughs> it's raw yeah you should watch some interviews with him he's like a really weird dude but he seems pretty brilliant yeah so 
So there's really a moment at like four minutes that I want to get to and then we can fade out at whenever. I do like the guitar on this though as well. That was another reason I chose it. Which I know you were uh, doing some research on John McLaughlin. Oh yeah, I was talking to Lee before the show about John McLaughlin. Uh, we'll get to that. We'll be crossing streams, weaving webs. Okay. But he played guitar all right. on all this. Huh? He played guitar on all this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Yeah, I had never heard of him either. So I was like listening to this, and I was just kind of thinking about how, like, back in like elementary or whatever, like middle school jazz band shit, like, uh, yeah. guitar is always kind of like the lame instrument. Yeah, yeah. Ironically enough. Or like guitar's cool. I don't know what you think is cool or not cool, but you know what I mean? Like guitar, like you can barely hear it in most like jazz songs. Or it's not like a focal point. But when I was listening Definitely. to Bitches Brew, I was like, damn, this guitar is nuts. So I was having to look up who the guitarist is. And then I listened to some John McLaughlin. How do you say it? John McLaughlin album. I think it's McLaughlin. Yeah. And he like, I was just researching him and he like went to India and got had the same guru as carlos santana so they made an album together i can't remember what it's called something like peace love and devotion or something but mm -hmm. uh i listened to that whole album today it's it's great it's just guitar shredding but i really like how john mclaughlin like i feel like he does almost like what i like blues players do of kind of like you can really feel the emotion of it and it's like explosive and then quiet and stuff dynamic or whatever um, yeah, and like he brings in the weird, other, like Indian and Eastern influences into it too. Yeah, so, so that's like basically what fusion music was. Yeah, this idea of injecting these outside influences into jazz. But isn't it by like jazz purists? Don't they hate it? Or no? I don't know. I think sometimes people think of fusion music as being cheesy. I think it uh -huh. eventually got to a place where like elevator music was kind of jazz fusion you know like the stereotype elevator jazz heard the guitar part that I wanted to hear so we can fade whenever yeah I am curious what you thought I want to hear your wh why you chose Jeffrey I definitely like remember when that album came out uh huh and the album cover was controversial so I, I'm sure that's where you started at but I want to know if like yeah that's basically in terms it. of his catalog like what's your if that's your favorite album or if you have other ones so let's just go into it um so yeah, I chose, well, you brought up the theme album covers and I was really struggling with it because I felt like I really like uh, Leftover Crack, Fuck World Trades album cover, which we are, we've already yeah. done. And yeah. then there's like some other ones that I thought could be interesting to talk about that are like shocking, like NoFX has the one where the guy's like eating out a goat. And uh -huh. then uh, also I just love, well, like Bruce Springsteen, Born in the USA, ultimate classic, but uh, yeah, we did already, that one. We already did. I think we did Born to Run. I don't think we did Born in the USA. No, we no we did. Remember we connected. Oh, we did Bruce to Bruce. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that was a great episode. <laughs> Go back and check that out in the archives. Um. And then I was also thinking of the Rolling Stones' "Sticky Fingers," because oh, I don't that'd know, have been good. I don't know if you know that album cover, but it, the vinyl mm -hmm. version. Uh, it's like a picture. I don't know of whose dick it is. Is it Mick Jagger? Probably. I don't even know if it's any of them. Oh, yeah. But it's like a guy's like crotch shot of him in jeans. And then the album cover has like an actual zipper that you can unzip, uh, which is hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, and then I was <clears throat> just, yeah, for some reason I thought of uh, Young Thug because I remembered, yeah, when this album came out, it was controversial, I guess, just because he was kind of like dress. He was in a dress. And there's always yeah. been the root. I mean, Young Thug does the thing of like uh, androgynous. androgynous, yeah, and like um, bringing, you know, questioning like what's masculinity and stuff. 
Um, Definitely. And this was like, I read the backstory about it a little bit. It's like just some outfit that some designer made and Young Thug saw the picture and was like, I got to get that. And then really? but I also love that. <laughs> that's part of like what makes Young Thug great, I think, too, is like he just does kind of whatever he wants and it's always kind of absurd. Yeah. Um, and it, it's like, I don't know. I guess it's like you almost say like artistic, you know, seems like he's like doing it to provoke you or whatever. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Especially for hip hop. Yeah, and this album too, a... I can't, I can't even remember when it came out, but it was after, like a slew of probably like the mixtapes when I really started listening to him, all the slime seasons, and uh, I'm up is probably my favorite Young Thug album, but I didn't love Jeffrey when it came out, but it's definitely like I feel like. It was the height of kind of the pop fame, and then it was kind of like the statement of the thing and all the songs. I love how all the song titles are just names yeah. of people. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that. I liked that. Which it feels like his more cohesive mixtape from yeah. an artistic standpoint. Um, yeah, it's almost like, I don't know. Art it's statement. A, yeah, is it like an album? Yeah. Um, but there's also, it just has some good songs. Like, I feel like, it's short. All the songs are catchy. What did you think of it? No, I think that sums it up. Why don't you go into your you don't, into your pick? Yeah, you I don't want to know. What you don't picked. really like uh, Young Thug, though, right? He he's growing on me a lot, but okay. no, I wouldn't say I was a natural fan of him. Would you say Young Thug is jazz? <laughs> yeah, maybe. All right. Well, speaking of which, we're going into Young Thug. Riri. Nice. So I just came out you remember this one? The hills, the yeah, yeah. And my nigga, nigga just, Nietzsche said, bro, I just told them the same shit. The nigga said he just told these girls that he knew what I was about to say. It's crazy. Cray, cray. I did, though, you know what I'm saying? With a golden shell with an ice dot AP, plus some rolling bells on another level. I say, bitch, what is you thinking? We are the blanket. Yeah. Bitch, ass on me, and I got ranking. I'm studying ranking. Battle stop messing to the hoes or you start shrinking. I know I'm a blue and I'm a gang bang. I know I'm a big, but I'm still saying. Motor for a dog, real you they ain't with me, baby. I got real hitters with me and they dangerous. You can't find them on no camera, but they no name. Watch them pile up, be on tide. I've been up all night. Me and baby bought a cloud every day we do. Love a vibe, love a vibe, she make me feel so nice She went on the first day we met, she let me fuck all night What do you think of his voice on this chorus? Well, that's what everyone always say is check out his voice and to me, it's like I didn't really listen to rap music where people were singing. So it was like I had nothing to compare it to. So I didn't appreciate how well he does it compared to other people. Yeah. And so as I've listened to more music that like is in this style, I've come to appreciate how well he does the style particularly. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, when he first started off, I remember thinking he was just ripping off Lil Wayne. And like, yeah, he literally that was what I thought too. He was going to put out... Was he going to name his album Carter 5, I think? Yeah, Bar no, and Barter 6. Yeah, well, then he ended he named up... his album that. Yeah, but I think he was going to name it, like, the Carter 5 at first or something. Oh, and then he got it, threatened to yeah. sue him or something. <laughs> yeah, and, like... Yeah. But I think that's yeah, just no, part definitely. of it, too. Part of his whole, like, shtick. I think a lot of these modern guys owe a lot to him. Yeah. A lot of people have copied him. And I love like motivational songs like this. Gotta do the work. Yeah. It's like everything I got in life I earned. Gotta get to do the work. Yeah. Wow, crossing the streams. We're gonna get there again. So good. What animal do you think he sounds like there? <laughs> seal yeah is that your connection we're going to seal it might be <laughs> <laughs> all 
All right, minus 10 points that you uh, thought of that. <laughs> Yeah, I love the track list, too. Uh, the first song is called Wyclef John. Uh, but Wyclef John's not on it. But Wyclef John is on the track called Kanye West. And there's... Yeah, uh, isn't that great? Song, the other songs are Floyd Mayweather, Swizz Beats, Future Swag, Riri, which is this one, Guwap, and then Webby is one. And then the other one's Harambe. Yeah, all of Young so Thug's all like, uh, influences. So I feel like another thing is like I didn't appreciate like his lines. I don't know why, but they just like get stuck in your head. Yeah, I mean I think it's because they're they're catchy melodically, but also he has this way of just like saying things that sound so like off the top of his head. Yeah, but then they just get stuck. His I mean, like way he turns a phrase. Yeah, I mean he's clever too. Um, I feel like he's not appreciated as much because people say they like can't understand him or whatever. But I mean, he has some good lyrics. He puts out too much music, in my opinion, that it's like too hard to keep up with and not all great. But yeah, uh, yeah. Without further ado, I think I'm gonna go on a run here. Nice. Straight into uh, Lee guessed it, so maybe that gets me minus ten points. Bitch, you guessed it. <laughs> but. Yeah, Young Thug uses his Seal voice on that album. Um, so let's listen to Seal, Kiss from a Rose. You want some background on uh, Seal? Yeah, tell me. Tell me. So he wrote this song in 1987 while he was living in a squat in England. And after writing the song, he felt embarrassed by it, and he threw the tape in the corner. And then it wasn't until he was recording his second album that he gave the recording to his producer, who is Trevor Horn. Points for horns, Trevor Horn. Nice. Um, who, Trevor Horn was in The Buggles, who made Video Kill the Radio Star. Okay. Um, and I guess Trevor Horn kind of like shaped this song into a hit somehow, which I'd be interested to hear, like whatever Seal originally recorded compared to how this song ended up. But uh, yeah. Seal said, to be honest, I was never really that proud of it, though I like what Trevor did with the recording. He turned that tape from my corner into another 8 million record sales, and my name became a household name. Wow. So I, I didn't, didn't realize Seal didn't... He came from such uh, humble beginnings. Yeah, I didn't know much about Seal, but apparently he started out in a British punk band, and then he joined a blues band in Thailand... And he journeyed through India, kind of like John McLaughlin. <laughs> Do you know about... I'll give you points if you can guess what the scarring on his face is from. Seal? Yeah. Um, doesn't it... He wanted, like, a permanent smile. <laughs> oh, no, wait. That's, that's the Joker. But good connection. Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh... Because Batman, Batman Forever, who was the director of that? Um, I don't know, Joel Schumacher. But I guess he like contacted 
um, Seal to use this song in a, like a sex scene between Val Kilmer and Nicole Kidman, I think. Wow. So do you like Nicole Seal? Nicole Kidman to Tom Cruise? No, I'm just kidding. What? Do you like Tom? Or do you like Seal? <laughs> I do like Tom Cruise, but not Seal. I, I could picture you liking Seal. This is too. It's too. Um, I don't know. It's too 90s. Again, though, the cover of this album is like naked Seal, like in a weird position. Yeah. He has some like androgynous vibes as well. Exactly. So I thought the, you know, weaving webs. The Definitely. song won record of the year, song of the year, and best male pop vocal performance at the 1996 Grammys. Wow. Seal. Didn't he have like a, a really random wife or girlfriend? I was just about to say Heidi he, Klum. He yeah. married Heidi Klum, and they have a daughter, and they got divorced in 2012. That's too bad. Wow, we might be going to Germany later on in the episode. So wow. again, weave in webs. Weave in webs. Yeah, I was just thinking like this song is such like a bland power ballad type thing. Yeah. It just kind of made me think like people always love ballads. Like even now, like that Lady Gaga, Bradley Cooper song. Like there's like always Definitely. a ballad on the radio. And just for whatever reason, I think it's just the older you get, you just want to hear a good ballad. <laughs> yeah. Also reminds me of um like uh what was the big one for Armageddon that Aerosmith did? Yeah. I don't miss a thing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like a movie tied into a movie scene and a big ballad for the radio. Yep. All right. Well, with that, I subject you subjected the listeners to 14 minutes of jazz <laughs> and I subjected them to Seal. So um if you're listening along at home, you can subtract points from both of us and vote in the Survey Monkey in the links of the show notes for who you think wins. Or you can email us. What's our email, Lee? Connecting the classics at gmail.com. And if you, you recommend an album that we use on the show, we will Venmo you $1. Or a theme. A theme. We want or themes theme. more yeah. than albums. Because we got we got our own albums. Yeah, we got them all up here. All right, so you passing it? Passing it back. So we were talking about Miles Davis, and I don't know if we mentioned that the person that did the artwork is a artist, and a lot of times people would either use his paintings or commission him to make their own artwork or make uh, artwork for their albums. Mm. And so my next connection is going to be um, another person that used, actually, I think he commissioned the painter. His name is Matty Klarwein. He's German. And uh, he did it for both his live album and his al studio album, A Message to the People. We've talked about him before. His name's Buddy Miles. And this song has been uh, in rotation for me for the week. But I decided to give you guys the live version we don't have to listen to the whole thing, but um, go ahead and launch into it, and I'll explain to you what why it's so amazing, this album uh, artwork. I'll give you points for Miles, Buddy Miles. Yeah, and we got Buddy Miles, Miles Davis, Buddy Miles. So I don't know if you remember me playing this back in the day maybe like one of the first couple episodes vaguely remember the name buddy miles but i don't remember much so he was the drummer he had some studio albums on his own and then he eventually started playing with Jimi hendrix um in the band of gypsies oh right right it's so coming I'm, back i'm gonna go ahead and send you this album art cover so you can see what i'm describing so same artist and he has this like photo of Buddy Miles with a gigantic afro and he's like spewing fire into the like top of a volcano. It's pretty epic. Yeah, pretty spot on description. I can't add much other than it looks like 
some sort of mountain on his neck. So here's here's the best part. So if you flip to the back cover, <laughs> there's like a photo with him wearing like the U.S. flag as a cape. That's great. It's another drawing, but yeah, he's he's uh, shirtless with a is that a bolo tie? Is that what that's called? Yeah. And wearing an American flag that turns into pink weirdness. So this is kind of another thing I thought of when uh, thinking about songs for this episode. The Lost Art of the Back album cover. Right? Because everything's singles. You only get one shot. Yeah. It's just it's all digital. Yeah, it's all digital. So there's no back covers anymore. I mean, I guess there are because they still make albums, but... If you just listen online, you don't see the back cover. Totally. Also, like, some albums have such great, like, inserts and insides and stuff. Yes, my baby's gone away now. And she ain't ever coming back to say. Yes, I know. Yeah, I know. Yes, I know. Like this build up right now. Little Trevor Horn. Oh, horn points. Wow. Crossing so many streams. So also the artwork for the live album is his like face painted onto the side of a mountain, which is even, which also is funny. Yeah, just gotta Google this, people. I know that's the thing. Is I'm a. It's a podcast. I'm sorry. It's a it's a podcast, and we're doing a visual episode. So. Also love the fact that he's probably playing drums while he's singing all this, which I think is. That's takes cool. an insane amount of like breath. He's like an Anderson Pack. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for bearing with me. Um, really love that song. I'd like to do the same thing twice. <laughs> Just like Bob Marley. Oh. So what is this? It's it's so nice. I'd like to do the same thing twice. I totally butchered that connection. Uh, this is Bob Marley and the Whalers. Do it twice. So the, the connection is just... I don't think we've ever played the song, same song twice on an episode. Ah, okay. But I, I like the segment so much. That you played it twice. Yeah.
Also, Bob's anniversary of his death was uh, on, I think, Sunday, Saturday. Rest in peace. R.I.P. So, do you know who the original members of the Whalers were? Was it Seal and Young Thug? Because they <laughs> wail. Close. I guess Seal's not a whale. He's a seal. That's true. Was but it both uh, Shamu? So I didn't realize that you know Peter Tosh, right? Wait, the Whalers. Are they that Japanese band? No, no. So you know how it's like usually Bob Marley and the Whalers? Sorry, that was a bad joke. Because Japanese okay. whaling. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. So the answer is Bob Marley, Bunny Livingston, and Peter Tosh. Ooh. And so they formed as like a doo-wop kind of group. That's why they're called the Whalers. But then Bob sort of took over the band as the other two left. And that's when he added like a backing band and became Bob Marley and the Whalers. A little fun fact for you. Peter Tosh um, was secretly a part of a conspiracy, a CBD company conspiracy to legalize it and then profit off people. No, I don't know. Delete that. <laughs> All right, you passing it back? <laughs> yeah, I'll pass it. All right, well, we left off with Seal, uh, Kiss from a Rose. We're talking Androgyny. We're talking um, remixes. We're talking Bob Ostertag. We're talking Rose. Rose and Bob Ostertag. This is Pointillism, Variation 1. <laughs> you know about Rose? No, I don't. So I saw Rose in LA in 2014 at a warehouse party because all my friends used to like electronic music even though I hated it. So I would just go to these warehouse parties and get really overwhelmed while all my friends were on Molly and I they were having the time of their lives and I was just miserable trying to like get drunk. That sounds rough. Um, but I have to admit, I went. I'm gonna give a shout out to Tom Chen, who introduced me to Rose, friend of mine. I went with him to a show, and it blew my mind because it was really good. Um, and she's playing in LA at the Regent Theater this weekend, so I'm probably gonna go check her out. Hey, and nice. it's like, I feel like it's like goes along with the jazz thing, because, or it's like improvisation, you know, and. Uh, well, it's like, what would you call this? Like techno? Yeah, definitely. Um, so the person, it's like a really, I feel like this word is overused around Rose, but it's like every like article you read is like the enigmatic artist because her Rose's website is insane. Everyone should go check it out. Um, it's just like a bunch of weird pictures and kind of like we were saying with Young Thug, like her whole yeah. music, music thing is like an art project almost like people don't know whether it's like a man who just um dresses up as a woman when she performs yeah or and i feel like people always describe rose as like she or her you know so that's what i do yeah yeah but it's like anyway so it's like that adds to it kind of because it's like it's clearly like just like androgynous person and then like she always like works with uh like visual weird visuals going on behind her which i guess probably like a lot of like techno artists do this but 
for some reason I just like like the repetitiveness of this and stuff and like I don't know it's just interesting yeah good textures um, so this album is Rose remixing songs by Bob Ostertag from his album Bob Ostertag plays the Bukla 200E oh talking about build ups right here crossing streams Also, Bukla, you remember we talked about that in the synth episode? I know, and I was looking him up. He's, he looks hilarious. Another visual thing, but everyone look up B U C H L A. Uh, Don Bukla. Um, he was like a. He, it says he released his first unit shortly after Robert Moog's first synthesizers. However, uh-huh. his instrument was arguably designed before Moog's. Um, but he, there's a picture of him standing next to his synthesizer, and he's like this old dude with a smirk, gray hair, wearing like a hat <laughs> with a bunch of buttons on it. Um, so he's like the West Coast dude, and then Moog was like the East Coast. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so yeah, so Bob Ostertag, do you know about him? No, the name sounds incredibly familiar, but I don't know if... Yeah, so let's fade this one, and then we're going to launch into the next track, which um, bear with us, folks. Um, This next track might be a little long. It's 43 minutes, but (laughs) so we'll see you after. Um, (laughs) This is Bob Ostertag, sooner or later. I think you just like saying that last name. <laughs> Oster tag. I'm not I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Mi padre me decía, el combatilla era un combatiente de este pueblo. Me decía que yo no fuera tan despijo. So he was a. Uh, no una creatividad y valor para llegar un Big in the scene trunfo, of like collaborative que improvisation, que like jazz. Yeah. Then he used like sampling, tape manipulation, and electronic custom-made instruments in the early '80s. <laughs> But he was also this really political, and he got involved in the revolutions of South America in the 80s. Whoa. And he moved to El Salvador in 1982 and abandoned music for seven years. And then this is the album that he put out when he came back. And that beginning clip that we were talking over is a kid from El Salvador, I think. Like, Sounds like it's real footage. Yeah, so it's like a field recording of a kid burying his dad, dead dad, and like dis- describing what he's gonna do to like the people who killed him. Wow, we just got really dark. Yeah, but so this album is crazy too because it's like, I mean, this came out in 1991, but I feel like a lot of like this stuff right here is just like this whole album derives from that one clip so it's like the sounds of like the grave being dug and stuff and then he'll like ca- wow. capture like the kids like you'll hear in a second like I feel like even that is like maybe like the kid's voice or something well maybe not that part but yeah um, I almost feel like it's like yeah like that it's like just crazy and like I I was kind of relating it back to Young Thug who I feel like Young Thug can get across these like crazy emotions with his voice yeah and I feel like this is ahead of its time especially because he's doing this all like cutting up tapes and like he didn't use a computer until the 2000 like late 2000s oh wow it's all tape loops yeah and uh um Now he's like, he's put all his music online for free so like anyone can download it and remix it. And he's like 
big into that. He's like all everything he does is kind of like political too. Mm -hmm. He's also currently a professor of technocultural studies at UC Davis. Ah, okay. So I'll just listen to a little bit more of this, but everyone go check this out. I feel like this one right here is cool. But yeah, I also feel like it's almost like early like Fortet type stuff. Or like it's like perfect for those guys to sample, you know? Mm hmm But just what he's doing with like the little like weird samples of like specific things almost becoming like a new instrument. Yeah, definitely. I like this part right here. And uh, this is a super indulgent run right now, but I kind of want to uh, just play a little bit of this because so this is like earlier years, Bob Ostertag. And now this is what Bob Ostertag did in the when he started using the computer. And this is clips from uh, this is his album called Woot. And it's uh, 50 minutes long. So for the next 50 minutes, uh, we'll be back. But, you know, it's like based off. It's all from video game clips. So it has um, music from Halo, Star Fox, Legend of Zelda, Super Smash Brothers, Melee, World of Warcraft, wow. and a bunch of other games. All right, passing it back. <laughs> All right, well, I like that you brought us to a really dark place because I think I'm going to do the same. Um, I do think music and, you know, suffering in life sometimes go hand in hand. So we were talking about uh, Bob Marley and the Whalers and... Uh, I think actually Bunny Whaler and Peter Tosh stayed with the group for a little bit, but Bob Marley kind of took the lead. But uh, I don't know if you've read much about Peter Tosh, but his story is actually really sad. He, uh, once he like became a really established musician, he did a lot for his community in, in um, Kingston, Jamaica. And in 1987, he um, had people break into his home and they were looking to rob him, but he didn't really have anything of value. And in like uh, an attempt to intimidate him, they shot like some some rounds at Bob into no, not at no. This is Peter Tosh. Oh, Peter Tosh, my they bad. They just shot rounds into that like towards the ceiling, and it, something ricocheted and hit Peter Tosh. Oh shit! Ended up killing him. Oh shit! That's how he died. Um, yeah, so that's how he died, which is really sad. But reminded me a lot of someone else that we wanted to talk about on this um, podcast who had a similar role in his community and was tragically shot down outside of his store. So go ahead and launch into some Nipsey Hustle. Ooh. Grinding all my life. Wow. Talking about songs that are motivational. We are, yep, yep. my folks, weaving webs. And rest in peace to Nipsey Hustle. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Wanna slice, got the roll of dice, that's why. All my life, I've been grinding all my life. Look, all my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Wanna slice, got the roll of dice, that's why. All my life, I've been grinding all my life. It's good music for working out too, or if you're like looking for pizza. <laughs> Just wanna slice. Or if you're grinding weed, or I was going to say Parmesan cheese, but I guess you don't grind that, you grate it. <laughs> We're going to get there. To Parmesan you're, cheese. You're all over it. You're all over it. Damn right, I like the life I built. I'm from West Side 60, shit, I might got killed. 
But yeah, I do I do like this kind of like motivational stuff. Yeah, that's why I love Young Dolph. Yeah, Young Dolph's great about that. Yeah, all his songs are just motivational anthems. Hey, so. Hey, stop. So you know how you just use like a Biggie reference? The damn right, I like the life I live. Oh, is that from Biggie? Yeah, yeah, damn right, I like the life I live because I went from negative to positive. I'm juicy. Okay. But I feel like uh, Young Thug has that you're similar. The, you're the rap genius, you know? Where he has the ability to like, it's like nothing in particularly like crazy about that sentence, but it just the way he turns the phrase, it's catchy. Yeah. I just want to say it. But Young Thugs are usually more absurd. <laughs> like you were uh, quoting one to me. Which one did you bring? <laughs> Which one did you say again? Because I love that Something line. About I know the I know the second half. Just for one night, let me put it on your face. Oh yeah, I like the second part, and I think about it a lot. Which is like, basically says, I won't quote it verbatim, but he says like, "Let me nut." Only way I go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, right after evolution, that. I guess, of rap. But again, too, like he talks about, I mean, people have criticized him, too, I think, of like not being real like blood or whatever, which is stupid. I don't I don't want to get into that, but also just like pe people like accuse Young Thug of being gay and stuff. But then he is always talking about like having sex with women and stuff. Yeah, I've always wondered that. Yeah, but I think he had at least at one point he had a long time girlfriend. I think he also has like multiple children with different women. Yeah. And speaking of young thug, another sacrifice, hustle pay the price, want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why all my life I've been grinding all my life, all my life been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle pay the price, want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why. Just want a slice. Dadpimp.com world premiere. I also liked so that he he decided to combine two different songs from his album uh -huh, back to back video. for this video, which is pretty tight. I can feel a vibe hustle on the ride. Yeah, we're in the business of Slow light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. All she wants is time, all she wants is time. Look me in my eyes, call me on my lies. Lock the city down till the summertime. Yeah, I feel it's gonna be about two hours long. I feel uh sad about Nipsey Hustle dying. You can hold me down through these trouble times. I'll be another victim to my stubborn pride. I feel like it was a really like like you're saying like Peter Tosh, like dumb way to die. Not dumb, but like senseless. Yeah, kind of thing, no, definitely sad. senseless for sure. I like that elevate my game for the hundredth time. Yeah. I also feel like the combo of the two songs is like they're better both back to back. Yeah. He's wearing the same outfit in both. But in the first one it's red, second one's blue. Yeah. I feel like he's one of those guys too who's like always like even though he's like a gangster rapper or whatever he's like um, would like collaborate with like YG and stuff and they talk about it you know and like obviously the whole like everyone talked about this after he died but how he just stayed in like uh, his neighborhood rather than moving out. Yeah, exactly. He like opened businesses and stuff in his neighborhood yeah. too. Which, yeah, the Marathon store. 
which apparently Jay Z quoted or Jay Z said on stage in Brooklyn, like "We gotta gentrify your own hood" or something, which yeah. is kind of funny because I feel like what Jay Z did was like what Nipsey Hussle did, but to like a extreme. <laughs> Whereas like Barclays Center, like a lot of people, I don't know. It's like it could be good or bad. To, like gentrification is good or bad depending on what you think about it but I know there's like some documentary about Barclays Center where there's like one person who just didn't want to leave their building that was going to get demolished so I had to like talk about oh. it and stuff wow ain't no going back once the lights on you left the dorm in the middle of the night homie after David's going viral that's your life homie ain't no point of even trying to lie homie his uh, partner was Lauren London, like London on the trash. Hey. On the track doing that victory lap. Yeah, I really like victory lap too. I feel like, I feel like Nipsey Hussle is like, I feel like I've just heard about him forever. And like when I first moved out to LA, I remember he was like popular on like mixtapes or whatever. And but yeah. he's one of those guys that just like always has been around, but it's like never really like a superstar or anything. And then it was like within the past year, like Victory Lab. I thought that was like that was the first like Nipsey Hustle album that I like played when it came out and stuff too. And then uh and it's like legitimately good and it got nominated for a yeah. Grammy. And it felt he had a lot of momentum going. He just had that like racks in the middle song with uh, what's his name? Die young guy. Fuck Roddy Rich. Yeah. And yeah, it's one of those things where it's like speaking of like hard work, motivation, anthems and stuff. Like I felt like it paid off for Nipsey Hussle, you know, definitely. But and then it just senselessness of life. Absurdity. Jazz. All right. <laughs> Pass it back. <laughs> All right. So we left off with Bob. What's his name? Ostertag. <laughs> That's right. Um, and I'm going to be honest. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. So the Rose and Bob Ostertag thing. Uh, Bob Ostertag plays the Bukla. That album's called... Motor mouth. So I could go motor head. Because what's on a motor mouth is attached to the motor head. But instead, I'm going Night Ranger, Sister Christian. <laughs> what? What's the connection? We're mo- motor mouth. We're motoring. Is Night Ranger a car? Just wait. You'll you'll recognize it. We're talking about ballads, talking about seal. Sister Christian, oh the time has come. And you know that you know the song? The you'll recognize it. One to say. Okay. Talking about build ups. Where you go and what you Build up. You don't like this song? Oh, yeah, this is a... Another power ballad? Please. Come on, man. It'd be like a song I'd hear in the grocery store at like 11 yeah. at night. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes you want frozen peas for some reason. <laughs> I'm like trying to decide if I want to get the sugar-free ice cream or if I'm just going to get the Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> uh, so the meaning of the word motoring has been contentious since this song came out 
Because it's like the, it goes like, you're motoring. What's your price for flight? Finding Mr. Right. So what do you think motoring means? Motor motoring. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I guess originally like people thought it meant cruising and they've said it's like just means driving a car or something. Um, so yeah, it's about his sister and he was actually saying Sister Christy, but the other band members thought he was saying Sister Christian, so that's why it's named Sister Christian. That's pretty funny. What is that? That has a name, right? When you mishear a word in a lyric? Oh. In a song? Like, excuse me while I kiss the sky. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I almost made that con connection one week. Um, so, guitar solo right here, shredding. Monde Green, that's the, the Monde name. Green, yeah. Guitar shredding, kind of like uh, John McLaughlin, kind of like jazz, but rock. Uh, and if it's all right with you, I'd just like to read the top YouTube comment on this video. Okay. Um, so it's... Oh, and I'd just like to say Sister Christian, I mean, Night Ranger is next show. They're playing at the uh, Thunder something casino. Um, in Lincoln, California on July 27th. So check out Rose, then check out uh, Night Ranger. Richard Breedlove says, Ah, the good old days. I was 15. I wore a cool black members-only jacket with stonewashed jeans and an Izod shirt. I sported a mullet parted in the middle, carried oh my, my Harley Davidson leather wallet on a chain in my back pocket. Ronald Reagan was president and didn't take shit from nobody. Miami Vice ruled the airwaves. David Lee Roth and Van Halen were the bomb. And Night Ranger's Sister Christian was number one on the charts. Damn, I miss those days. Damn. Sobs. Motoran! All right, so I'm going to motor on back to you. All right. So we were we left off. Nipsey Hussle has been grinding all his life, stuck in the grind. Um, and you were kind of talking about it earlier, but I wanted to know who else you think's been grinding all their life. Bob Burnquist. Oh no, I'm not. We going into Ace of Spades from the Tony Hawk <laughs> soundtrack, Motorhead? No, no, we already did that. So uh, thought about who else might be grinding all their life. Um, you also sort of alluded to this. Uh, with ravers, people who go to electronic music concerts, grinding their grinding their teeth, grinding their teeth need on that MDMA. pacifier, need that pacifier. So babies. So, so here it is, uh, twenty minute version of <laughs> Baby Shark. So here is Craftwork. Since I don't think we've talked about them yet, with uh, Computer World Two, which I think to me is the album that kind of set the foundation. Also, for speaking techno music. Speaking of grinding. Uh, Lace Sins, Don't Bother Me, I'm Working, Craft Work, Grind In. Clips, Grind In. <laughs> grind In. Pharrell, Happy. You know what song makes me happy? Bruno Mars, Uptown Funk. MDMA. Funk. MDMA. Yeah. Funk, talking Funk Fusion. All right, so do you know why people grind their teeth on MDMA? I'm going to guess it's because it's a release of serotonin over a rush. And <laughs> uh, um, because the, the, the bros beats are hitting me hard. <laughs> uh, so I guess according to the internet, as soon as we deplete our dopamine... Um, we sort of lose control over our reflexes, which creates this, like, mm. urge to want to bite down. Interesting. It's like a primal thing or something. like. Yeah. It's like a reflex action that we can't suppress once our dopamine's depleted. Weird. So what do you think of this beat? This is 1981, uh, 82. I feel like it's pretty ahead of its time. Yeah. I like the album art too. It's like an old. Yeah, that was the other yeah. reason I chose it. 
like a Macintosh looking older than that computer with Kraftwerk's heads in yellow. And so this album was a lot of why like electro, the genre became a thing as well as like the Detroit techno scene. A lot of those guys were listening to this record and getting the ideas for techno and electro. Yeah, Kraftwerk was like hugely in influential, right? I mean, I know they are in like rap even too, but. Yeah, I think some people even credit them as like the Beatles kind of passed the torch and they became the like Beatles from the 80s on. Really? Wow. Is like influencing what would become pop music, right? Since Beatles was like influencing rock, which was pop, they influenced all the like dance and hip hop. Yeah, and with rock kind of fading out, this almost they might even start exactly being more. Because like, electro basically was hip hop for a while. What was that song Planet Rock? Africa Bimbada. Yeah, Africa Bimbada. Yeah. That's considered one of the first hip hop songs. Yeah. And he sampled the craft work. On that so. song, right? I think so. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm playing a rock. Yeah. yeah. Also, they used a vocoder, which I feel also, like would become a like huge thing. Bob Ostertag right here. Like little. Wow. But yeah, they also pioneered the vocoder, which lots of people would go on to use. So one person that I feel like definitely took a lot of their style from Kraftwerk is... Um, Daft Punk, um, they loved the sort of idea of robots making the music, and they obviously did dance music, and they also used the vocoder a lot. But the reason you really know that they were influenced by Kraftwerk was um, a lot of times when Kraftwerk's albums were first coming out, people considered it robot rock. That was a nickname people would call it, their genre. Let's go ahead and launch into Daft Punk's Robot Rock. Another another fun fact about um, Kraftwerk is they sort of had one of the first drum machines where they took like a tape sampler. So that you, you ever heard of the Mellotron? Uh-uh. It's basically like a keyboard that would p play like a tape loop and then pitch it up or down depending on like the scale of the keyboard. Tape loops like Bob Ostertag. Exactly, like like Bob Ostertag. Points what for Ostertag. they would do is they they ripped that little machine out that would just play the loop um, when you huh. like started the circuit with the key and the guy would use knitting needles to, to like touch the circuit to make the like circuit fire the tape loop Whoa. and so they, they used their own tape for like a drum sound so he would like have a kick and a snare and he would play it with these little knitting needles that's like the ultimate robot rock I feel like yeah it's great And so then you get someone like Daft Punk who's pretending like they're playing real rock music. And it's really just a loop. All clearly of, like... Yeah. Yeah. It's like a sample, right? Yeah, this is definitely like sampled drums and samples. They might be playing a synth, though. I feel like this, too, like Daft Punk is like... Kind of like we were talking about Young Thug. I mean, I guess every art like artist is kind of like an art. Not really, though, because some people are just more straightforward. But I feel like... Daft Punk is, you know, enigmatic and like a lot of electronic artists are like that, I guess, but yeah, I don't know. Kind of like the like Young Thug, you know, like Definitely. I feel like they know what they're doing by like just sampling this sampling like and then pretending to be robots and playing it. It's kind of like a commentary type thing, but it's also really catchy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you know, but 
they um, kind of struggled in the beginning of their career. And they didn't really launch into mainstream fame until like early 2000s. Huh. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it was because they did this Coachella performance. And did they flub it really or something? really stoked about all the like lights and uh, yeah, and people loved it. Oh, people did love and it. I feel like yeah. people did love it. And I feel like that was around the time that I kind of found out about them, like seventh or eighth grade. It was like 2004 was the performance. Yeah. And, like people started wearing Daft Punk shirts and stuff. Yeah. Daft Punk's playing at my house right now. Oh, my yeah, house. Exactly. All right. But I feel like a lot of people didn't realize they sort of struggled. People didn't really get it at first. Yeah. Yeah. You passing it back. We closing it out? Yeah, close this out unless you want me to go with my song. I could go on a run here. Um, It's up to you. All right, let's just go on a run. We'll finish it out here. All so right. I think another thing that really helped their sort of pop culture fame was um, a sample by a famous rapper that we've talked about on the show before for their song from their song Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger. Kanye West. Ooh. Let's launch into the Young Thug song. Young Thug song called Kanye West. Originally titled Wet Wet, then retitled Pop Man, then Elton John. Yeah. <laughs> also feel like that electronic like buzz that you hear kind of reminds me of Kraftwerk. Hey. Even well. Pouring up in a bench, Chanel it all, Chanel it all. You peek out with the colors. Middle finger stick it up. His voice is great. If you ain't never got no ball, can't put a hand put it in a ball. Then beat it up. Wet, wet, Expect that. Wet, wet, verse on this yeah jeffrey yeah well because this like when this album came out too he was going to change his name to jeffrey no isn't his real name jeffrey? well yeah i mean he was gonna like there was like people thought that he was gonna artist drop name. young thug name. yeah which I feel like choosing to do this cover to on like the album that's like no my name is Jeffrey and that's like him in a dress so so like, good yeah especially because it's young thug no my name is Jeffrey <laughs> yeah supposedly he was maybe gonna call it Elton John because uh the use of that piano player. Oh, okay. Who's like a Zaytoven protege. Nice. Yeah, Young Thug, great ad libs. I'd love to see Young Thug in this studio, like what he does. Seriously. I imagine him just doing like hundreds of takes. And just like singing Rana and trying to match up with the like in the background, it's like wah 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 wah. Oh yeah yeah. Wah wah wah. Like different tones. Also, did you know Bob Burnquist is Brazilian? I think I've, I knew that one. Song, but yeah, that's crazy. Every time we press she be her stuff Flavor like the big black time sheets Number one hit she in love with a voodoo stick Slipping on the match, yo Like a lefty in the video Blast off like the Rocket Man Can't no scream show loud He said like uh, Young Thug was so impressed by Working with him on the song That's why he named the first track I Club Sean That's amazing <laughs> That was a great verse Yeah Well, 
Well, I also feel like him and Chance, Young Thug and Chance, kind of took a lot from Wyclef Jean's like singing style. I could see that, yeah. Definitely Chance did. <laughs> She's so wet. Wyclef Jean in the background. <laughs> So, is Young Thug Jazz? Email us at connectingtheclassics at gmail.com with your answer. Or maybe we'll include that in the survey, Monkey. All right, take us home. He's got a pretty good flow, too. Did you hear me? What'd you say? I said he's got a pretty good flow, too. Like, inventive flow when he does rap. Yeah, definitely. The more I got into Lil Baby, it helped me appreciate Young Thug a lot more. Yeah. I just heard Lil Baby at... It was like a live thing on Sirius Radio of like Lil Baby at Rolling Loud. And yeah. it gets to the part where it's like, wah, 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 bitch, I'm Lil Baby. And like he cut, he stops rapping and like the, the beat cuts out and it's just like the whole crowd screaming it. It's like, oh my God. It's so funny. It's a great line though. That's, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I was glad that I picked Jeffrey just to go back and listen to it because I listened to it when it came out and stuff, but it kind of fell out of rotation. But uh, there's some good songs on here. I like the pick. Kind of a ballad, kind of weaving webs even more. Yeah, very melodic for sure. All right, well, I think you already know where I'm going. Um, the connection here just being we had guitars with uh, uh, Night Ranger sister Christian. Um, we already talked a little bit about John McLaughlin, um, but kind of like how Young Thug named his track list after just people's names. There's a song on Bitches Brood called John McLaughlin, which I thought was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just read about John McLaughlin too. Like he, uh, like Seal traveling through India, he traveled through India, and that influenced his style. Um, So like this was the shortest track on the album. It's only four minutes. <laughs> Good call. Yeah, I think Mahavishnu Orchestra is a bit a famous uh, fusion group. Yeah, but They're I like one of the pioneer. I feel like uh, John McLaughlin's guitar really has a lot of uh, soul and it's dynamic. You know, he goes from soft and then explodes into loud like 
little ditties, and he's all over the place and kind of unorthodox, um, which is what I normally like about a lot of blues guitarists. Kind of reminds me of Muddy Waters, but jazz version. Yeah. Uh, And also kind of reminds me of Young Thug's voice in a way. Which, by the way, I just want to say, I've been saying this for years, but Young Thug is the Freddie Mercury of our time. (laughs) Because, like, his voice is so crazy. And the whole, like, question about his sexuality and, like, persona and stuff. I like that. I think that's a good take. Yeah. Not not to go too far into that rabbit hole, but I um recently learned that Bohemian Rhapsody took a lot of like Hollywood liberties and sort of rewrote the story of what actually happened. Oh, I'm pretty sure. much ruin ruined the movie for me. Uh, that happens with any biopic biop bio. Yeah. They just kind of turned him into an asshole for Hollywood purposes. Was he not an asshole? No. They created this whole idea that he was trying to leave the band to go be like famous and rich on his own. Oh, weird. Like none of that. None of that was true. But I guess they needed an arc. Yeah, most people's lives don't have a Hollywood arc. They just end nope. senselessly. Gun violence. Well, this has been our longest, most depressing episode, so... uh, (laughs) I think it's... I think it was a good one, though. So take the survey, monkey. Lots to unpack, yeah. Let us know who you think won. Uh, Last episode, the results are in, and it's actually a tie. It's a tie. Good job, Lee. Hey, good job, Will. Zero, zero tie. So get your votes in. And send us your theme suggestions, and we will Venmo you a dollar. I got a theme for next episode I want to throw out. What what are you thinking? I'm thinking albums you want to listen to on the beach. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I'll do Neil Young's On the Beach. Hey, all right. Locked it in. I got to think about mine. Do you know that album? No. Perfect. All right, you got it. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely all I'll do. Wow. All right, I got it. I didn't even have an album in mind, so I got to think about it. But uh, it's a great album. All right, I like this one. I'm excited. All right, well, all right. we'll see you see then. You soon. I guess we'll see you on the beach episode. See you on the beach. <laughs> see you on the beach, guys. Travis and Drew. All right, bye. And all the other <laughs> listeners. All right, bye. Bye, Hazel.
that motherfucker I don't take requests Blessed be my lovers I'm not like the rest I'm bad like my mother So don't disrespect 